Okay. This, Hello, this everybody. Looks, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to Noemi Gonzalez for joining us today, the star of the Olmark Christmas movie, Undercover Holiday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And Fabio's here, too. <laughs> yeah. And tell us a bit, Noemi, what's been the main element in Jaylene's character and the movie in general that fascinates you the most and, and drew you to join the Undercover Holiday? Uh, it was the opportunity to be a very proud Mexican-American artist and to share our traditions um, and our culture for this holiday. You know, it's, it's really a nice time of the year for everyone for the most part. And um, it was really cool to demonstrate how welcoming and prideful our culture is and to have that in Jalen as a woman, as a singer, as an artist. And so it really drew me to um, fulfill it, uh, the role as much as possible. <laughs> That's really beautiful. And mm -hmm. since we know that Olmark's movies and, and shows in general always feature some well-shaped characters and also relatable storylines for the audience, in your opinion, where are you and Jalen most similar and where are you two most different as human beings? We're very similar uh, in a lot of ways. I don't see how different we are, um, but I see how similar we are. I see that we're both artists. I see that we're both proud of our heritage. I see that we want to express it and channel it in our artistry. I see that we want to be authentically ourselves. Um, that we want other people to know who we truly are instead of having people assume who we are. And um, it was really comforting to, to play her because everything that I feel was made louder by this character, by this platform. So it was really beautiful script written by Nina Weinman. Um, how are we different? I mean, I guess because of it's a movie, you know, she's majority happy all the time, but I'm human. So, you know, we all have our off days. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but I, I loved her character. I loved, I loved playing her. <laughs> and we know that the movie premiered in December 4 on Homo Channel, but if there is any fan uh, out there that haven't watched the movie yet, if you had to describe it in like just three words, how would you describe it? Oh... <sighs> Fun, heartwarming, y sazón. <laughs> Great picks. <laughs> and in terms of acting, what's been for you the biggest challenge in portraying Jailin? Uh, in regards to acting, I think for me it was doing um, everything at once in three weeks. I was acting, I was singing, I was dancing. And I did one stunt with the rolling pin. <laughs> so to do that in three weeks, I understand someone being able to do it easily when they're just acting and telling a Christmas story. But I had a lot more on my plate. And then not to mention the cultural element as the prim primary Latinx figure in the cast um, definitely leaned on my family members when I needed some uh, confirmation, but I had to make sure that all the cultural things were correct. I had to make sure that everything uh, was authentic and legitimate. So I had the pre I had more pressure on this, and that's also the first time that I'm a lead. So I I made sure that I carried that with grace, and that I was able to to do it. So those, those were the things that were kind of challenging, kind of more the the holding of the booking, but not necessarily the acting, you know? Yeah, that's the, that's really mm -hmm. a big thing also to be a lead in a movie, but also to take care of all those other aspects that your character uh, deals with. Mm -hmm. And talking about the environment on set, how would you describe your experience uh, working with Steven and the other stars on the movie and the crew? on the set while filming Undercover Holiday? Uh, Steven was a, an utter sweetheart. Um, my dad and my mom and, and, and my grandma especially, but my dad and grandma so funny, so funny. Um, 
Anne, who plays my best friend and assistant, utter professional and sweetheart, just a girl's girl, a queen, you know. Um, and uh, with the crew, it was fun. It was it was uh, three weeks of hard work, you know, three weeks of fast hard work. Um, and but it was nice when we would take breaks and talk, and um, it was just a, a nice holiday time. <laughs> Do you have any fun anecdotes that you share with us from the filming of Undercover Holiday? I'd say I a woman changed my life there. Uh, Jenny and Clarissa, um, but Jenny was there during the set to handle the tamales. And uh, I guess it's not necessarily funny, but it changed my life so it was strong. Um, and so we were talking because ultimately the handling of the tamales, the image on screen, she was hired so that she could be there to oversee that. And um, she taught me that, you know, she thought she was just going to make tamales that were amazing because she has the Frida Kahlo tamal, the Diego Rivera tamal, yeah. and they all have their personalities and stuff. And she said she thought she was going to make tamales for life. And then she realized that 50% of what she does is educational. So we found out that like 80% of the crew had never had a tamal and were filming with all these tamales. So Jenny and Clarissa were kind enough to gift the rest of the tamales to the entire crew that oh. they had. They had like 80. So they like, I think, split them and handed them out with their salsas and stuff. And so that was really beautiful to me because it was like our imitating life, you know, Jalen being like, you know, to her, Matt, come on, please, like, join in on the fun, relax and enjoy a wonderful family time in the holiday. Enjoy food, get warm, relax, take off your coat. And that was kind of what we were doing to this Canadian crew in Canada, in Toronto, that had never had, a, most of them had never had a tamal before, but we're telling a Mexican story. So it was a Mexican American story from this character's perspective. So it was really cool that uh, those two women did that and that they, they, we had a good talk. And I guess that was the funny thing. Just couldn't believe that uh, I, th I, it's, I saw part of my culture. It's like, you know, Italian to pasta, you know, it's so yeah. you'd be surprised that no one's ever had pasta. You'd yeah, like, there, are, there are some it's elements, some things that you can't, you, you don't even imagine that other people, other people around the world them. doesn't know what they, what, what this thing is. I mean, Mm -hmm. so it, yeah, it's really exactly. beautiful to hear this this story from you <laughs> yeah it's behind the scenes story of how it was also happening in real life on the on camera on behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. and now two fun questions that we always ask mm -hmm. to the people we're interviewing and considering we're talking about undercover holiday there or undercover holiday universe mm -hmm. and we would like to know if you had to choose any other character on the movie that a character that you would have loved to play if you could apart from Jalen uh, which character would you choose and why um I I hope that I could play my grandma's character when I'm older in in my own way and in my own storyline whenever that happens for me <laughs> god willing um because I just thought she was a great multifaceted character and you don't see you're starting to see that more but it's very new to finally see older people playing as multi-dimensional as a young beautiful ingenue or a young beautiful romeo like it's just like now we see so much more character and so i really liked her character a lot i i, I would love to play her when i'm when i get to uh, that place in life that stage And um, did you take anything from set, any prop or any piece of costume to remember your experience as Jalen? <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I actually was wearing the rings. It's a beautiful angel ring that they gave me. And it looks just like one, uh, like my grandma gave me a mirror that has an angel on it and it looks That's virtually beautiful. the same. So I thought that was my grandma winking. And then I also took some red boots. <laughs> 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 yeah and throwing back instead to the origins of your career as an actor um, as actor uh, how did the passion for acting come about in your life well it's funny you should say this and we're interviewing about uh, undercover holiday um so growing up I went into choir and I thought I was going to be a music teacher because I wanted to be a singer but in those times I thought like if I don't make it by 
18, I'm not going to make it. So I'm just going to be a music teacher. And then I went to college and I met a girl in my acting class because someone told me, we're going to put you in music. We're going to put you in acting because I told them I'm comfortable in the arts, but I don't know what I want to do, which is something I tell people because like, you know, find out where you're comfortable, but you don't have to have the answers and let, let God and the world help you. Um, sometimes if you don't know, just put yourself in that world. And so I did acting and choir and two writing classes. And in the acting class, I met a girl named Lorelli. And Lorelli begged me to audition for the BFA program, the Bachelor of Fine Arts program in acting at UC Santa Barbara. And we both auditioned, even though I didn't want to, I was like, no way, those guys are amazing. Like, there's no way I could be in that. And I got in. She unfortunately did not, but she continued theater studies and Chicano studies. And we were in House of Bernarda Alba for our last year together, directed by the same teacher, Jason Narvi, who uh, is part of the, the, the Power Rangers series. <laughs> um, ultimately, um, the way the, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to spoil anything, but the way that uh, Laurel, Laurel, Lorelei handles the difference of our journeys, Lorelei was the opposite. And oh. so I, I asked if we could change the name to Lorelei. And so in one of the scenes, I even say Lorelei love. So that's an homage to how I literally was saying those lines in that scene to Stephen, where I, I say my, my life would not be the same without her. And it was, it was ultimately Lorelei that did that for me. So because of her, I found acting as a god I found acting and the more I got into it I realized just how much I was passionate about it and I didn't think about it with fame or work I just thought about it like kind of like a like a carpenter looks at wood and starts to like get inspired and think of what they could do you know so um that was really fun that I had that training if I had different training maybe I wouldn't like acting I don't know but I'm very thankful for Lorelei for creator and for that program to get me talking to you <laughs> That's really beautiful to hear. And uh, a few years ago, you had the chance to work on a, on a very beautiful and popular show on Netflix. That's Selena the series. Mm -hmm. And what's your best memory out of that experience? How how was working with um, Christian Serrados and all the other cast members and portraying this beautiful story? There's so many good memories, so many good memories, you know, on camera, off camera, off set, on location. We filmed in Mexico. Um, so there's so many beautiful memories. But I think really for me, it was getting on that stage. It does something to you. You know, everyone's always on a ground level. But when you go up some steps that are intended for a level up so that you can give energy to the people, so you can give something to people. It really, every time I'd get up on that stage, I'd try to get up like I imagine Suzette would get up um, with her body language and her, you know, ready to drum. And, and then when I started playing, I had, it's kind of like the, the priest or the ordainer has the best seat in the house at a wedding. They get to see the, the lovely couple and the rest of their family and support behind them. Me as the drummer, the backbone of the beat, I just had this perspective that nobody else had. And I got to connect with Selena's music in a way that I didn't expect. I love Selena's music, I always did, but to now love it as a drummer and feel her music, yeah, it was a different connection that was, I have chills, that was beyond <laughs> what I uh, was expecting. So it was a real gift. It was really fun. I guess a quick fun one was, The first time we did Como La Flor album version, uh, we were in a theater in Tijuana and we we turned the camera on the audience and all the cast and crew, the crew was the drummer this time and the, the, the guitarist and piano, the props guy was piano. And we were on stage like singing to the audience and like we were singing, Selena, Selena. It felt like she could hear us. It felt like, Yeah, something special happened with everyone that was in the theater that day, that moment. So that was a really cool, quick moment. <laughs> Definitely, and I, I personally loved that show because um, I didn't know about Selena's story before mm -hmm. watching the show. So it brought me to to 
to learn more about her her mu listen to her music i mean and mm -hmm. i think that was really important also for Thank for you. people around the world to know more about selena and and her music and her story it means so much thank you so much it really does because you know like you said before like we said before you, you're surprised that someone doesn't have this in their world yeah so it's nice that film and tv you don't realize how much it can reach people and she is a, she's a special woman that i think um it's, it's beautiful for people to get to know her and her music and legacy so i'm honored to be a part of it and that that's how you got to know it i hope you watch the series first and then watch j-lo the movie that's how i the j not j-lo the movie selena with starring j-lo um because that's how I would do it. That's when I was done completely and I said goodbye to the role. I rewatched it after visiting Texas and meeting the family, then watched the movie and it felt different. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. And now our last question. Um, if you had to give some advice to young people or people in general that are trying to pursue an acting career or in entertainment, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? I would tell them, have fun, take it seriously, but not too seriously. I feel like there's this desperation of needing to reach our dreams, but you're already in your dream. You're, you're, just, you're just heading to different milestones. And, and, if you're just so worried about your first on-camera credit, you're not going to have fun in the theater when you have an amazing role. Like, and you might act more in theater than you are on camera. Like, you don't, you don't know. So just be grateful, have fun, um, take it seriously, but not too seriously. I guess I say take it seriously because some people, they just think I want to be an actor and, and all they have to reference is watching a movie. I'm like, you know, a lot of people, that's how they get their start, just in love watching movies. But why don't you watch the behind the scenes so you understand how, how we are making a product just like, oh, I would say Hallmark is making a Christmas card. There's a whole logic between the idea all the way down to the final envelope and still thing, you know, so find out if you really like it, if you really want it and take it seriously. You know, don't just say you want to be a DJ, listen to a different music when you're brushing your teeth. Don't just say you want to be an actor, but then you never take an acting class or read a book on acting. Um, a lot of people think it's just glamor. It is 90% really hard work. And now with the pandemic and, and big group events, it's like 5% glamor. You don't see the, the exciting stuff as much anymore. So I would say, do your research, take it seriously in that effect. See if that's really what you want to do. Continue on that. But while you're on that path, don't take it too seriously because you need to have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much, Naomi. It's been really Thank a you. pleasure for me to, to chat with you. And I hope you had a great time. I did. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and let's remind people that Undercover Holiday is available to stream on Olmer channel. And we can wait to, wait to, to watch it in Italy as well because it hasn't premiered yet but oh cool and we can I, I really can't wait to, to see it as well in in our platforms and channels here no thank you thank you prego <laughs> <laughs> and good luck with your upcoming projects uh, i hope there's more and more roles to come <laughs> yes yes we already got some on the works for you so thank you so much for your support and thank yeah, you yeah we'll keep you posted mm -hmm. yeah have a good day thank you you too bye <laughs>